stolen my purse. I've done no such thing. Oh, you're a thief. You've stolen my purse and all of my money. You're crazy. If I stole your purse and all your money, would I be taking the bus home? Well, how the hell do I know? Maybe, maybe you like to take the bus. Nobody likes to take the bus. What are you doing here? I'm taking the bus. <laughs> You've never taken the bus in your life. You're wrong. I take the bus all the time. No, you don't. You hate the bus. You would never be caught riding in a bus to Beverly Hills. Where am I? You're at the bus stop in Beverly Hills. Oh, it's a beautiful street. So many trees. The houses. It's all right. Too expensive if you ask me. May I have my purse back now? I don't know where your purse is. You probably left it somewhere. Give me a quarter. For what? So I can take the bus. It costs more than a quarter to ride the bus. How much is it? Listen, just go home. I, I am trying to go home. How can I go home if you won't give me a quarter? You live around the corner in the biggest house of the block. How do you know? Victoria, I know you. You must have seen my films. I've seen your movies and I didn't like them. Well, then you don't have any taste. I have taste. I just didn't like your movies. I used to be a movie star. I made 27 pictures. Yeah, I know. You tell me this every day. Have we taken the bus together before? Do you need me to take you home, Victoria? I don't want you at my house. I know. You fired me. <laughs> I did not. It's Wednesday. You fire me every Wednesday. But by tomorrow, you'll beg me to come back. You call me at four in the morning and realize what you have done and promise me that will never happen again, even though I know it will. I'll show up when time for breakfast. You're insane. I am. I've worked for you for 29 years. I'm crazy. You have made me crazy. I've done no such thing. People like me. They always have. Girl, where did you leave your purse, Victoria? Well, how should I know you're the one who stole it? Did you follow me here? No, I just need a quarter so I can go home. Where do you leave? Live. Go on, tell me. Uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Victoria, you lived in Atlanta in one of your movies. Which one? <laughs> I don't remember. They were all the same. I I used to be a movie star. Well, you're not a movie star anymore. That was a long time ago. And, and Betty Davis was my best friend. We were like sisters. She sent you a Christmas card once. She was not your best friend. Well, how do you know? I know everything about you, Victoria. Well, then do you know where my purse is? I need to get home to the... Farm in Virginia. That was your first film, Victoria. You never lived in Virginia, not in real life. I did so. You've never, ever been to Virginia. But I've been to the White House. But you've never stepped foot in El Segundo. I beg your pardon? You haven't been outside of Beverly Hills since I met you. Why bother? I mean, I have everything I need right here. A beautiful house, a wonderful housekeeper. Maria. What? Well, what are you doing out here? I, I told Montgomery to drive you home. It's Wednesday. You fired me. But you're my best friend. Uh, yeah. You accuse me of terrible things, Victoria. Then I apologize. You're an impossible woman. I work every day for you and always you accuse me of doing horrible things. I have never stolen anything from you. My, my daughter has. Oh, God for, be, forgive me. But your daughter is a witch. <laughs> Isn't she? Oh, she's horrible. <laughs> Sometimes I wish she wasn't mine. She treats you badly, Victoria. She never calls or writes. Maybe she stole my purse. 
No, yeah, why not? She stole your jewelry. She borrowed it. Uh -huh, five years ago. <sighs> your children love you. Oh, they don't have a choice. I'd beat the hell out of them if they didn't. Do you love them? Of course. And your husband? Ah, he's always been good to me. He works hard. I miss my husband. He loved you very much. <sighs> it's been so difficult without him. I hear you sometimes talking to him. I don't have anyone else to talk to. You always have me. I'm sorry I fired you. I'm sorry I called you a pendeja. I'm sorry I told you that Ida Lupino was a man stealing Jezebel. I didn't believe you anyways. <laughs> Maria? Yes, Victoria? Will you walk me home? I knew you were going to ask me that. Well, will you? You only live around the corner. I want to go home to my family. I have a life too, you know. I don't remember the way. Victoria, I am worried about you. I, I, I'm not going to see that doctor. What if I promise to go with you? Well, it, it wouldn't make a bit of difference. There's nothing wrong with me. I, I just get a little confused at times, that's all. I understand. But you're going to the doctor even if I have to take you there screaming on the bus. I don't know why I even bother arguing with you. It seems how like you always get your way. As it should be. I only have your best interest at heart. You'll find me someday. Did I ever tell you that I used to be a movie star? You can tell me all about it on the way home. Oh, will you cook me dinner? Fine. What do you want to eat? Those things that you make me all the time. The... Chiles rellenos? Yes! And a margarita, please. Mm -hmm. Only if Montgomery will drive me home. My husband, my kids, my grandkids, they need to eat too. Thank you, Maria. Your family to me, Victoria. You even drive me crazy like they do. Well, will you help me find my purse now? Yes, but I'm not watching one of your movies again. Oh. Maria, I don't know how many times we have to go over this. I just want you to, like, watch my favorite one. And your movies are horrible. They're movie. all the same. Horrible. There's nothing to I'm eat. a star. No, they're not. I'm not watching any movies. Oh. Not tonight. No, no, no. I'll cook and go. Fine, fine. Then just take me home and cook then. Oh, fine. Whatever. You know? Whatever. Yes. Yes. It's possible. I've lived here for more than half my life, and I couldn't begin to tell you anything about my neighbors. Hmm. Which ones? Well, the ones who live across the street that have that terrible little boy who peed in my driveway and dug up my hydrangeas. Yes, he's 27 now and in medical school. His name is Foster, and his parents are Charles and Roberta. Well, they never say hello to me. Rude. They stopped coming by when you told Roberta she was in cult and accused Charles of being a communist. Oh, I've never been very neighborly. <laughs> mm, you've changed your mind, haven't you? About what? About going to see the doctor, the specialist. Uh, maybe I should reach out to them and apologize. Now I could, I could send them a fruit basket. Maybe a kitten. People like cats. Uh, or an autographed picture. They don't want a fruit basket or a cat, and they don't want your autograph. They want to be left alone, just like everybody else. You're avoiding the subject. I think I'll have lunch in the garden today. Can you see to that something light and simple? There's nothing light and simple or simple about you. Did you cancel the appointment? I don't want to go, Maria. That's the truth. Why not? Because there's nothing wrong with me. Victoria, I'm worried about you. I can take care of myself, Maria. I have for, for many years. You know, since John died, I've done a damn good job of keeping it all together. And you know it isn't easy. You know what I go through, how forgotten I am. 
You're the only one who's here with me day in and day out. You know how, how lonely it can be. Oh, that telephone never rings no matter how much I need it to. I miss my career very much. I miss my husband. Hell, I even miss my ungrateful daughter, but I'm not falling apart. I never have and I never will. Yes, I've had a tough time remembering certain things lately, but well, who hasn't? You know, I've, I've lived a long life. If, if I'm forgetful every now and then, you know, so be it. I've earned that right. It's expected of an old broad like me to mix things up every once in a while, but I'm not going to the doctor. No matter how much you try to convince me to go, people see a doctor when something's wrong with them, when they're ill, but there's nothing wrong with me. I'm not sick. I'm not running a fever or struggling to breathe. I'm just old. As much as it pains me to say that, it's true. I'm not the woman I used to be. You know, there's no more glamour left in this face or on this body, on these bones. That's all over now. Hollywood is far behind me. And my God, I miss it with every piece of my soul. But I'm here. I'm alive. Maria, I'm not giving up and letting you or anyone else stick me in, in some home to be left in a abandoned to rot. No one wants to send you anywhere. I just want you to see someone who might be able to help you. No matter what you say, Victoria, your condition is getting worse. I don't have a condition. There are moments when you have no idea where you are. It, it's a big house. You want to get lost in it forever? You want to disappear? What happens if you wander off and me and Montgomery can't find you? I would never forgive myself. No one even remembers who I am. Oh, if you're going to start sorry for yourself again, I'm leaving. Wait, wait. Don't, don't, don't go. I have things to do, and I know better than to try and argue with you. Melanie is coming home. Huh, who told you that? She did. Hmm. She telephoned. Left a message on the machine. She's driving down from Sacramento. When? Today. And you're just now telling me about this? I'm scared to say this, but I forgot. Until now, this very second. Well, I was so occupied thinking about my upcoming appearance at that charity benefit. The charity benefit? Yes, you know, the one that, the, what's his name, is putting together. You know, The man that used to work on all those USO shows. You know who I'm talking about. You know, tall guy, very... Handsome, very funny. Victoria, the charity benefit was over a year ago. You refused to go to it because you didn't want to be photographed. I want people to remember me how I was, not how I am. You need to see a doctor. I want to be remembered, Maria. And I want you to admit that you need some help. Why do you keep saying that? Because I care. <laughs> well... You know, sometimes I wish you didn't. Ah! No family photographs. No mother-daughter photo shoots. I shouldn't be surprised. It's like I never even existed. Uh, she said you were coming, but I didn't believe her. <laughs> it's good to see you, too. Why are you here, Melanie? You left a message. You left three messages within the last week. You made it sound urgent. I was worried about my mother. Ha! I want to believe that's true. God, this house is clean. She insists on it. It has to be camera ready. Always. Are you living here now? It's almost midnight. I decided to spend the night. She had a tough day. Don't you have a family of your own? Yes, but Victoria is my family too. How very noble of you. My mother doesn't deserve you. Most days I would agree with you. I'm not staying long. Hmm. I didn't think you would. Just long enough to convince her to do the right thing. Oh, and why else, what's that? Sign a power of attorney. Oh, you want to be in charge of all of these? Is that what you're here? I am here because I am worried about my mother. 
your bullshit. I beg your pardon? You don't give a damn about Victoria. You never have. That woman has given you everything, and yet every chance you get, you take more. You take and take and take, and then you leave her with a broken heart. She sits in the house all day, staring at the telephone, hoping you remember her, hoping that you'll call her and, and ask her how she's doing. I'm the one here with her when she can't even remember her own name or, or, or where she is. I put her back together again every time she falls, apart, she falls apart. I do it because I care about her, because she's my best friend. You show up here with that same look of greed all over your face, searching for a way to get more money out of your mother, looking for a handout, an opportunity. You've never worked a hard day in your life, Melanie. Have you had any idea what your mother went through when she was making movies? What was that studio like? Those men who were constantly judging her and intimidating her because they were terrified of how talented your mother was. And after she worked 14 hour days giving everything she had, she came home to you and tried to be the best mother she could. But every time she was greeted by a cold, manipulating little monster who could give a damn about the hard work and sacrifices her mother was making just so you could have the very best. How dare you come here acting like you're concerned for her well-being? You're here to make sure you haven't been written out of the wheel. And what about you, Maria? Let's see what you're up to spending the night, making doctor's appointments, leaving me messages about how worried you are. What's in this for you? Did she promise you a few million if you stood by her side? Do you sit around here all day watching her movies and telling her how great she still is? Do you lie to her just to make her feel better? Did she put you up to this? Did she ask you to tell you, tell me what a, a saint of a mother she was and what a bitch of a daughter I am? You have your own family. Go home to them. It's where you belong. I am not leaving your mother. She needs help. Well, I am here now. Maria, what's all the shouting? I'm sorry we woke you up. Hello, hello. Um, I'm Victoria. Have we met before? You seem very familiar to me. M Mother, it's, it's me. Mother? Victoria, it's Melanie. She just got here from Sacramento. Melanie, of course. You don't recognize me. You don't remember me. I, I apologize. It's it's late. I'm I'm sleepy. Look, I I know how important it is for a person to be remembered to not be forgotten. I'm I'm very sorry. You're staring at me like you have no idea who I am. You didn't tell me it was it was this bad. Bad? Have, have I done something wrong? I'm I'm sorry. I didn't know we were expecting company. Oh, so now I'm company? I, I, I don't understand. Why are you so angry? Angry? I have I have been angry since I was five years old, since I realized how famous my mother was. Everywhere we went, every person we met, everyone wanted to be near you. Strangers on the street would just push me aside just to get close to you. And all because we made some old movies that nobody even watches in years. They don't even show those things on television anymore. I hated those movies. I still do. Everyone said how lucky I was to be your daughter. Told me they were jealous of me. That they'd do anything to have you as a mother. When they realized that I wasn't going to be beautiful and famous and a celebrity like you, they felt sorry for you because you got stuck with me. Plain Jane, that's what they called me. A girl who could care less about Hollywood and having a movie star for a mother. I thought you were cursed with me. Stop taking my picture when I no longer wanted to smile for the camera. I never asked for any of this, mother. Not one bit of it. Hollywood was your life, not mine. 
I just wanted a normal mother like everybody else had. Instead, I grew up being constantly compared to you, always living a few feet behind you, but never in arm's reach, never in your circle of light. I have been driving for hours to get here to see you, and now here I stand and you have the nerve to tell me you don't recognize me, you don't know who I am? I came here because Maria called me to tell me that something is wrong with you. That you're not remembering things, that your, your mind is starting to go. I need you to look me in the eye, Mother, and tell me, do you know who I am? Do you remember me? No. Victoria, let's get you back to bed. It, it's like you can talk to Melanie in the morning. I'm sorry that, that you're upset with me. I'm, I'm sorry you hated my my work, the work that I did. I mean, those movies are very special to me, you know, all of them. Because of them, I had a great life. I have this house and, and Maria and Montgom Montgomery and all the beautiful memories here of my husband, John. and Yes? I do remember you. Do you? Yes, but I I didn't think you'd actually come to see me, but, but you're here. Why not? Because I have nothing left to give you. There's nothing here for you to gain, Melanie. All, all, all of this will belong to Maria one day. Victoria, you never told me that. Mother, I'm... I'm still your daughter. Yes, you are. We're family. No, we're not. Look, I know it's been a while since I've came to see you or, or called, but... Why did you forget about me? I mean, do you hate me that much? I don't hate you, Mother. I, I never have. I hated your image. Everyone treated you like you were a god. I gave people something to believe in. I mean, what do you believe in? I, I don't know. Do you believe in, in love? Hope? Magic? I believe I've been angry for a long time. At what? At who? Has, has someone done you wrong? You've, you've changed, Mother. I, you're different. Five years ago, we, we never would have been able to have this conversation. I, I want to have this conversation. I do. There is no time like the present, Melanie. That's why they call it a present. It's, it's a gift every second of every day. I'd like to hope that I've made the most of the time that I've been given. And I hope that there's still more time to come, but you know, who knows? Mother, I, I don't care what you do with the house or, or the money. I have my own life, but I, I want you to go to the doctor, to the specialist that Maria has found for you. Promise me that you will. We can open that box tomorrow, Melanie. Right now, I want to sit down and tell you everything I know, everything I can remember. Maybe Maria will be kind enough to make us some coffee. She's heard my story a million times, I'm, so I'm pretty sure she's tired of them, so we'll let her get some sleep. But you, Melanie, you might not know them, uh, and I want to share them with you. I, I want to tell them to you while I still know them. And then maybe you'll tell them to other people, and, and, and they'll live on through you just like they live on through Maria. Oh, they might not seem important to you. My life, the, the, the movies I made, the, the love your father and I shared. 
but they mean everything to me. Just like your stories will when you share them with me. I mean, after all, isn't that what everybody wants? You know, to feel like they, they made a difference, you know, some, some way, somehow. Don't we all just want to be remembered? Thank you.